Hi everybody, Nothing Fancy here. This will be a philosophical discussion about the force continuum, i.e. different defensive options you might have against uh, bad guys. If you're watching this and saying there are no bad guys, then this may not be the video for you. You might want to go to a different video. I'll make reference to this specific video in my tactical knife reviews because it's important to understand how a tactical knife fits into that force continuum. The force continuum being how, what are our options to defend ourselves against bad guys, perpetrators of evil, if you will. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about. First off, and I know I don't ever show myself, I just show the object in my hands. Hope you guys don't mind. I like concentrating on the important stuff, not my face. Anyways, in the force continuum, first off we have our fist. In its various forms, different ways we can defend ourselves. There's lots of techniques out there. In my opinion, I think the, f the fist is a fairly ineffective defensive device. Lots of bones in our hand. These bones are very breakable. In fact, they break all the time when people are trying to defend themselves with their fist. There's different ways you can mitigate the breakage by hammer blows, different ways to hit with the strongest part of your hand. Nevertheless, if you've watched mixed martial arts at all, you'll realize that one hit with a fist does not a bad guy's intent end. In other words, there's a lot of people that can take a hit with a fist and keep on ticking. So, a fist, in my opinion, is better than nothing, and it's what most people who were against a defensive device end up using because they didn't prepare and they have nothing else. But if I have an option, I'm going to have something with me to equal the odds, especially if I'm outnumbered. And that's what we're going to talk about. So, moving along. First, in the force continuum, there's a lot of different things you can use. I'll cover just a couple of them, things that I think are tried and proven and that work and aren't hokey. First off is pepper spray. I like 10% OC spray myself. I think it's pretty effective. You can see I've carried this one a lot. This is a First Defense Mark III brand. I think highly of this brand. I've seen it work a lot. Anyways, this is a 10% OC uh, spray that can uh, kind of close down the mucous membranes, the eyes, and cause lots of discomfort in the bad guy. However, it does have some disadvantages. One is that it is a mist or an aerosol, perhaps even a foam that's supposed to stick to the perpetrator's face, but it doesn't always stop the perpetrator. I have seen videos of people getting hit by this and they keep on doing what they were doing. If they're drugged up enough or motivated enough, they can work through the effects of OC spray. Also, it's an aerosol. That means it's going to be carried by wind currents. It can blow right into your face if you're not aware of where the wind is. So you could actually be in, end up incapacitating yourself in the heat of the battle. Probably the worst thing that could happen. But it has happened and it will happen in the future. It is lightweight. It's easy to carry. Make sure you get your pressure stays train with it once in a while, know how the spray works, always be aware of where your wind is if you decide to deploy this. Another upside is it is non-lethal. We don't have to kill anybody for that and that is always preferred. We're not talking about being a Rambo. We're not talking about killing people. In fact, we're talking about extricating ourselves from a situation, getting out of there, defusing it, and just surviving. That's what we're talking about. Ego doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about. Survival does. OC is a non-lethal option. The next option we'd go up to, which is both non-lethal and lethal, one of my favorites though, would be an ASP police baton. I don't mess around with no names, I just use ASP. They're very uh, proven, have a great track record in uniform forces. Police use them all the time. I have this one extended. This is a 21 inch electroless nickel airweight ASP baton. I like it a lot. It's very lightweight, easy to carry, quick to deploy, strong, durable, intimidating when it does come out. I'd, I'd knock it down, but I don't have a hard surface in the office to show you, so I'm just going to leave it extended. has a foam grip on it. Now, I said lethal and non-lethal. By that, I mean, depending on where you hit with an ass baton, it can be lethal. But my first option, of course, again, is to defuse the situation, get out of it, run away if I have to. This is purely defensive, not egotistical. We're trying to get out of the situation. This 
baton if you hit there's a lot of training videos available for it including from asp i believe you got to know kind of how to use this i do train with this one on a bag so i kind of know what i'm doing but i'm sure there's a lot more people out there that are more proficient in it than i am i just try to maintain a certain level of uh, working proficiency while i carry it but if you hit maybe on the lower extremities maybe behind the thigh with a good solid whack some of those pressure points uh generally speaking the perpetrator will fall to his knees they won't have an option and it will hurt a lot if you go above the shoulders according to cops it is considered a lethal hit anything above the head uh, above the shoulders towards the head with this is a lethal hit you could actually kill someone with this so it's very be very careful as in all the things we're talking about your laws and regulations where you live will might dictate what you can and cannot use as a civilian so just be aware don't get busted um, carrying something illegal I guess I'll leave that up to you okay Aspaton in the force continuum great option has good reach too better reach than actually a tactical knife does uh, 21 inches to be exact so that's pretty good sorry that's my light I'm dinging the bell there with so great choice I actually prefer it over a tactical knife because it gives me more non-lethal options than a knife does speaking of a knife that takes us to that option and that's why I want to discuss philosophy in this video what do I mean by tactical a tactical knife this being a CUDA max knife I won't talk in the specifics about this knife because we're talking philosophy here but a tactical knife the whole purpose is to stop the person from hurting us so tactical being defensive so I kinda use those two interchangeably this one has a nice reach nice blade defensive handle might be a little bit slick sorry I had to throw a specific in there but a knife is a purely lethal form of defense if you ask me granted we may or may not kill the bad guy with it but when you're talking about slicing people with a knife that's pretty much considered lethal by the courts anytime a knife is presented that's lethal force very serious you don't take it lightly it's employed with much thought and consideration and forethought I should say but it is an option so when we talk about tactical knife we're talking about a knife that you can defend your life with and in that and in other videos I'll talk about how the features of each individual knife uh, meet that mission requirement or maybe perhaps fall short on it the benefits of a tactical knife would be lightweight they're more compact they're dependable they're easy to deploy if you've practiced with it they're really good in close quarters as if as if effective as a gun in my opinion and they're cheaper and they last they're durable so tactical knives have a lot going for them if it comes down to the point where you've decided lethal force is the only way you your friends your loved ones or other innocent people are gonna survive that dark day so that's a tactical knife now there's other options of course the gun this is a SIG P226 anytime we pick up a gun we check make sure it's empty point it in a safe direction treat it with great respect We'll talk about the specifics on this gun. We're going to talk about generalities and philosophy. The gun is a great option, however, it has some disadvantages. It's heavy. This one would be about two pounds fully loaded with an extra magazine as well. It's more, more bulky, needs a carry device like a nice holster. Also, it's harder to conceal. And then there's legality problems. A lot of jurisdictions just won't let you carry a gun. You can carry a gun, but if you're busted, that's a big problem, i.e. felony. So there's a lot of legality issues involved as well. A gun is effective. It's effective at longer range. It's effective in close quarters as well, as long as you know how to employ it. But it can jam. It's not 100% effective as far as a cycling action goes. And it takes a lot of training to work with. And training means expense, i.e. money. You can go smaller if you want just being a kel P32, a lot lighter than the SIG 226. So there's a lot of different gun options available to you for that lethal force continuum, but again, they don't have perfect attributes. So in summary, where does a tactical knife fit in? It fits in because it's lighter weight, 100% reliable, easy to conceal, easy to employ. We'll talk more about it in future videos. Thanks.